When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. There was a time when sunlight turned the earth into a gallery, when elegant estates welcomed works of art that drew us closer and closer together. It was a captivating time. It was spring, this spring, at Biltmore. Plan your visit or overnight stay so you can enjoy the marvelous works of Chihuly while every corner of Biltmore blooms. Reserve now to get spring savings at Biltmore.com. Hashtag your music note intro. ESPN's finest, Catherine Terrell, Saints beat reporter, joining the Saints Block Party podcast brought to you by BetterHelp. Um, I've just started referring to Catherine as professional instigator at this point. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> start that shit. She be starting that shit, boy. I like that. I like that. Just just professional instigator if you're if you know the meme then you know what i'm referring to let's let's just let's just jump into it to this with this team with the current state of the states um they have a big game against the panthers on on sunday and i don't even even really know or care about what the outcome of that's going to be where is like you've covered this team when sean was the head sean Payne was the head coach and saw that team you left covered the Bengals. Um, and then came back home to New Orleans and covered the team again. Where is – you've been with this team through training camp, through games. Where is this current state of New Orleans Saints as you currently see them? Um, if we're going to talk about the general attitude just surrounding the team right now, I don't think I've ever seen the fan base this upset. Like I've been trying mm. to think about that all day because I knew we'd probably talk about it. Um, you know, and I covered the Bengals when they were losing. So I've seen upset fan bases. Like, this is not right. new to me. Um, it actually feels very familiar. Uh, but mm. I don't think I've Ooh. seen this. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Well, I didn't mean that in a bad way. It just it felt familiar. No, no, I know, as, I, I know yeah. exactly how you meant it. I'm just saying yeah. even that analogy is like, because you covered them pre-Joe Burrow, correct? Yeah, but I didn't yeah. cover, like, the really bad year. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. But, the Hugh but Jackson. I, no, no, no. I'm thinking of Brown. Sorry. No, Hugh Jackson was the OC before Bro. I got there. And then he came right. back for like three games or something. I don't know, there was a lot going on that last year in Cincinnati. <laughs> um, but it's been in my mind because like that, I've said this a couple of times, that fan base was so fed up and tired and they were not coming to the games anymore. So mm. the, uh, it was very obvious when you look out the stands and they'd be empty. And so Cincinnati is a small market. That is their mm. only business. Like ticket sales really matter to them. So right. I always thought that when that started happening, that was one of the reasons they finally made a change because they could not look into the future and say, Hey, our, we're not selling tickets. Like our fan base is really upset. This is, this is going to continue. So we, we need to make the change. And so it's, it's a different situation with the Saints, their financial situation and all of that. But, you know, I know the fan base has been talking about this a lot. Like, it, people notice those sort of things. Like, you look yeah. out in the crowd and you see all that blue. Like, that, that's noticeable. And I don't know that I've ever seen it that bad. And I know the Lions travel right. well. And I know they're really excited. But um, I don't have a good, good comparison game in well, New Orleans for what I saw the other night. There might be one. Well, I just I can't remember. <laughs> we we, we I, couldn't I, give I just, we we couldn't give the ticket. We have season tickets couldn't give it away. to couldn't give it away. Like literally, like <laughs> went on Twitter yeah. and said it's a free ticket. Who no one hit us up for that ticket, which to me was just Wow. That's baffling. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I'll just check I just checked SeatGeek. Panthers tickets are going oh, for as, as little as twelve dollars. Well, the that's, that's not surprising because you know it's a team that's won one game coming in that just got eliminated right. from the playoffs and I they're know. yeah I but mean, for a Saints wow. game twelve dollars like yeah you couldn't 
Oh my even God. that but, that Lions game, the tickets on like like on Seat Geeker was like six like sixteen was like the lowest like for the Lions game. Wow, and it was actually getting yeah. confusing. Like I went to the bathroom, and so when you walk down the hall, and obviously like you rely on the crowd when you're leaving in game to tell you what's going on. <laughs> right. So <laughs> the crowd is cheering. She, she heard the cheer. She thought it was for the Saints. It was for yeah. what? No, I actually I was I was like, is this a lot for the Lions or the Saints? I couldn't figure it out. Like that's how that's how bad it was. I, I didn't know who was cheering for who. I mean that's, that's bad. That is yeah. bad. And and the thing yeah. is it could get worse. Like it could get worse. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because I'm I don't know how like how an organization moves like when a city or fan base turns on a franchise, turns on a quarterback, turns on mm. the head coach. Like, I know they're saying, look, we're not listening to the naysayers outside, blah, blah, blah. I understand they got to operate like that, but, like, how do, you, how do you operate? Like, how do you move forward? Like, how do you sell hope and positivity and optimism? Because that's what they do in the offseason. They have to sell hope. They did it this past offseason. I bought it. We bought it. And they're going to have to do that again after this season. How do they do that coming off what's going on? I mean, you go, you know, go through the whole cap thing all over again. You shut all the cap money. You open cap space. You sign free agents. Um, <sighs> you, I mean, you you make excuses as to why the last season didn't go well. But there, the thing is, there aren't excuses. I've said this since Thank you. March. I think I said, yeah. Once they signed Derek Carr, I said, well, so last year. When, when, or not last year, um, when Peyton left, you know, that was Peyton, that was still Peyton's team. They kept the whole yeah. unit together. Uh, Dennis Allen really didn't make many changes. And, you know, for a couple of years, they'd had a ton of injury. So already made excuses. So now in this offseason, he gets his own defensive coordinator. He gets to hire coaches. He handpicks his quarterback. Until three weeks ago or so, they had no injury. They had the easiest schedule in the league. So, and I said, they don't, he wouldn't have any excuses. So the pressure, if he doesn't succeed in the season, it's going to be on. Now, you know, as y'all know, on social media, there was that big to do the other day when Brett Martell and I were talking about, um, it was a Fletcher Mackle about whether the team would move on. And I was saying just based on how the team has reacted in the past, if say they get all the way to the playoffs and exit first round, or maybe just mix the, miss the playoffs three weeks ago. I would have said that that might be enough to keep them a sound. Now, I, now I don't know because when you lose the fan base, that's a big deal, like a really big deal. And it's, I, it's an interesting point that Ryan brought up about the, like DA saying like, they don't listen to like outside naysayers, but yet like everyone in the front office, like this is to our podcast. Like which, which one is it? Just make, just make it make sense. But I, I think something that's important to to ask you is how do you feel the team is responding or not responding to Dennis Allen as head coach? Like, do you feel like maybe some of the players has essentially maybe tuned him out, whether it's D, DA, do you feel like maybe some of the right receivers have maybe tuned out Derek Carr because of his play, um, even though they maybe, is is that a sense that you're getting just from like the locker room standpoint? Not yet, um, but every player is different. You know, back in 2014 when they had – or 14 or 15 when they had that crazy year, that locker room really did have problems. And so a lot of times that does not all come out until after the season. It's kind of like a piece-by-piece piece thing. As people get more disgruntled, they'll tell reporters this or tell reporters that, and that people leave. And so then that's a lot of times why people will be like, well, why didn't this come out during the season? It's because a lot of people are, are players, uh, coaches, just whoever talks to the media, they're so focused on what's going on during the season that right. that's, that's not really going to always come out. And sometimes it does, but it just it, it's just, you know, you know how reporting goes. Um, so I feel like we didn't have the whole gist of how bad that 14-15 um, team was until. Yeah. We, we really yeah. didn't. Like, yeah. we, all we that got, happened. Yeah. yeah, we had no clue, which I think, I don't know if that's more of a testament to Sean as the head coach that nothing came out in the media or just it's it's hard to say but no I, yeah. I agree with you 100% it did, it did eventually but like I didn't know about those two like locker room fights until 
um, the following spring, like things like that. Um, so I think every player on this team is different, but I do think that I don't, I don't see that they've thrown in the towel. I mean, first of all, like the captains are veterans that are in their last few seasons. So personal pride, that means something to them. So, right. you know, Kip, you're in Damara Davis, you're never going to see, you're never going to see them quit. Um, right. These no. rookies, they have something to prove. So a guy like A.T. Perry or Rashid Shahid, who's not a rookie, but, you know, he barely, he only played half a season last year. He has something to prove. So I don't, I don't think you're going to see those guys um, throw in the towel. Now maybe it'll happen right. with a player or two. Um, if it has, I couldn't tell you. I mean, you know, film doesn't lie. And usually if you watch enough film, you'll, you'll be able to see that eventually. But right. um, no, I think when things like this go wrong, they play for themselves a lot if they don't buy yeah. into what the coach is saying. But I also do think that as a player, you have to have the mentality that they are still, the playoffs are still in reach. And if they're yeah. still in reach, you you have to have that mentality that every week still matters and I, that's still i think where this team is at just my sense right. i don't think anyone's given right. up anything like that right 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 because i mean every player they go in they preach early is you know you win your division uh you win your division get placed at the right spot in the conference get punch a ticket to the playoffs and then we'll see what happens so obviously there can't be like fans where you know we some fans are just like we don't want to make the playoffs you know <laughs> no no player will ever say that but um None. No, they wouldn't. I, I, I'm trying to figure out. I've been trying to figure out. You know, you've seen training camps, mini camps, and all that stuff all through the years, through the Sean Payton years, Greenbrier, um, <laughs> the Saints facility. You've seen it all. Have you seen like? Were you, have you been able to pinpoint a difference between like DA training camps and preparation versus the Sean Payton era of preparation? Or does it all just kind of look the same to you? Um, I think in the early years, I mean, and I wasn't around for like two a days. Like that CBA mm-hmm. um, came before me, but still, I was around long enough ago that they probably were allowed to do more in training camp than they are now. Um, and mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think that's a DA thing. I think that's a league wide thing. Um, to the point where it does make you wonder, like, are these teams being able to be prepared enough for the season in general? Um, yeah. Because it's so restrictive. And so, you know, when you're watching training camp for a week, like first week, people want to know how are the defensive and offensive line doing? And you can't even really, in good conscience, tell the fans anything because ugh, how would you even know? They don't have pads on. Right. Um, but, you know, honestly, people I've seen people ask like, well, how did y'all watch training camp and not realize this team wasn't going to be good? They looked like they had it together in training camp. I thought the chemistry was on point. Uh, there were days I'm trying to remember it blurs together. Um, I, I, there are definitely were days where the offense was off, but that's training camp. They're all trying to work on specific things. So sometimes even if the offense has a bad day, they could be working on things that we actually don't know about unless they tell us. Um, so the chemistry looked okay. Um, they are always talking about how it was super competitive. They said it was one of the most competitive camps they've ever had. I kind of wondered how that is possible, but yeah. at training camp, everyone always says those sort of <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you've been for 10 years, though. Like, is it really the most competitive camp you've ever had? I, I don't right. know. I never knew whether to believe that, but um, – no, I mean you really don't get a sense. You really didn't get a sense was a sense of things being a miss until week one, and then it was like, okay, are they just starting slow against the Titans, or is this a sign of something bigger? Um, yeah, I wish I, I could give you a better answer. I mean, it kind of blurs together, but I really yeah. I do think it, it it is very different now. But that's a that's a CBA thing. Um, yeah, for sure, and I'm sure it drives John crazy too. I'm sure it drives all oh, yeah. the NFL players. Nah. Especially the older coaches. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um why and this it this is the most bizarre thing to me that I still just can't understand. The whole Trevor Penny situation is literally the most baffling thing I've seen as like a as a Saints fan in a very long time. Like I don't. I won't even get to like how he found out he was benched and him not being told that we already discussed this on the on the pod. Yeah, but that's not the first time something like that's happened. Remember, Taysom didn't know that 
he was um, being moved to tight end. Oh, oh, yeah. Got all about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry right. to interrupt you, but yes, yes. That was, no, that no, no, no. That's well. fine. Just, just drop little spicy things throughout. Um, yeah. He, he's active on game days, but he's not even like the sixth offensive lineman. Uh, Andres Pete goes out briefly last game, and her stays at guard, and like Landon Young comes in at left tackle for a couple of snaps. And, like, I have still not heard a reason why, a legitimate reason why, like, he's not even able to come in. And, like, I know the whole thing was like, oh, we're, we, his confidence thing. And it's yeah. it's, it's, it's so baffling. And I, I don't know what to make of it. And I don't even know, like, how he's feeling, like, as a player, because obviously he's not really active in the game plan. So I'm I'm assuming he doesn't get a lot of media access to even talk to, to you guys. No, it's he just, does, it's... actually. He does talk oh, he to does. us. Um, yeah, I mean, he's actually – he has a very good attitude about it. Um, I did talk to him a few weeks ago after it happened, and I ended up not writing anything. And he was like – he was like, yeah, that, that sucked. Like, that was hard. It was, it was hard to – to come in that on the Texans game right after I'd been benched and you're coming in cold yep. and um, we were there. We were at that game. Yeah, and he yeah. yeah, he struggled a lot. But again, he was like cold. <laughs> yeah. Um he was very honest about it. Like and that sucks. Like, you know, he's a young he's a young guy and you work your whole life to get to this point and then all a year later or a year you first year you get injured, second year it's like, well now you're benched. Um, you know, I think that I feel like they don't they don't want to give up on him. I I know that. But it makes I I wonder, you know, if there's any disconnect between the front office not wanting to give up on him and the coach is simply saying I don't I I I don't want to play him. You know, he's getting overpowered. Um a guy that big shouldn't be getting overpowered by bull rushes and things like that. But, you know, at the same time, how do you get better if you don't play? <laughs> I mean, All right. So All right. It comes back to when training camp, you know, like I said, they don't get that much time with pads on. Um, yeah. So I, I guess, I guess you, in the off season, you work on technique and, and things like that. But no, I mean, I'm with you. Um, I'm sure he's frustrated about it, even though he's a very good attitude, um, really hasn't complained about it. He's taken it in stride, said, you know, I'm just going to go back to working on things I need to work on. Um, but yeah, I mean, Land, it seems like, I mean, I know they had Landon Young come in the other day. Um, so it seems like they don't even want to, they don't, they just, that, that's what, just want, want him to sit. Yeah. That's what blows me away because you go from, he's literally penciled in as the starter, you know, all through training camp, all through preseason, you know, through week one, they, as they self scout, they viewed him as the starter, at least potentially the starter. And to go from that to not even worth attempting to get any snaps, it's just I I don't know. Like I ever with this team, I just look at I'm like, what is going on? Like what is actually going on with this team? I just want to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, know. <laughs> it's, it's interesting how both their lines have so many problems. So I actually went back and looked at that um, prediction column Jeff Duncan had at the beginning of the season and what we all said. So I was like, what did I actually say? Um, because I know people are saying, you know, most of us, most of the media predicted that they were all going to have winning records, which we did. Um, and I said, I had thought I said, I, did um, I thought I had said nine and eight, but apparently I said 10 and seven. I probably felt like I, I am in the middle too much and I needed to make more of a conviction. Um, right. I was like, I said 10 wins. I would have, interesting. I thought I said nine. Um, but I said the offensive, I said, uh, the pass rush is a concern. Uh, the offensive line is a concern. I thought they would be better with Carr. Um, and then I forgot the one other thing that I said. But I was like, yeah, wow, pass rush was concerned in the summer, and that has not been fixed. And this team has not been good at drafting defensive linemen. So I don't really know how they fix that. Um, I do not think that's a simple fix. And so it's just interesting that if you're going to say, we all coaches love to say, the game, you know, is one in the trenches and, like, they're not doing that. Um, so that's something at next – at the in the off season they're going to have to – might have to start there and they're going to have to figure it out and, like, work their way out because I don't know what they're going to do about the pass yeah. rush and I don't know what they're going to do about penning because, you know, if you're not going to give up on him, he's got to – he's, he's he got to play. play. 
Yeah, he has to play. <laughs> he has to play. <laughs> he has to play somewhere. Um, right. I don't know where, but he has to play because that's your first round pick. You have to figure out how to make that work first, because you can't spend a first round pick on an offensive lineman next year. You have too many needs. First round pick, and you also are giving up a oh. second round pick to Philly because of that trade. Like, so, like you, so like it's crazy to me that a big reason why they really held on to like Marcus Davenport for so long was because of like sunken fallacy costs and they invested so much and to go up and get him. And then like with Trevor Payne, it's like, yeah, oh, oh well. <laughs> just yeah. like this. No rhyme or reason. No yeah. rhyme or reason. Well, I mean, they have, they didn't hit on the Payton Turner pick either. So that's a lot of first no. round picks that um, yeah. they haven't hit on um, outside of a lot What's so. your sense with, uh, what's your sense with, uh, management with Loomis. I know there are some fans that are like, ah, oh, Loomis could go too. I, he just always seemed untouchable to me. Like, I don't, I, yeah. I just don't yeah, see, I, like, I don't really, I don't see him going anywhere. Um, just not with the way this organization is set up and, you know, how close that, you know, core group is. Um, but I mean, it, again, I think, I is that part of a problem? Like, is that, that, like, little um, core group of just, if you if that's just a core group and it kind of just goes to like maybe like group think when you just have yeah. the same like are they potentially not willing or open to hearing outside ideas or possibilities i don't think that i don't think there's any way that they're missing what's going on right now um and if they are that's that's a big problem see i'm always in the mindset that a coach should at least get 2 years um at least two years. I mean, I think that a lot of times they get moved on from too fast and have no way to actually establish their culture and things like that. Um, I think this situation is a little different because they were so much about like, we've already written the culture and it's all here and we have all this stuff. Um, So if the team, if the fan base is this upset and you can't make knee jerk reactions, I get that. They have to make whatever reaction is best for them. But if things start to go south and they don't make any changes, then it's just going to feel like they're just okay with the status quo. And that right. was the problem in Cincinnati that people or fans felt like they were just okay with just being okay. You can say that that's unfair. You know, Marvin Lewis um, took from the playoffs five well, straight he, years. Damn good coach, to be oh, fair. Oh, yeah. Like I mean, a, like I, I, yes, I very much think Marvin is a good coach. and. Um, I, I sometimes I wonder if he had been somewhere else, you know, the, the ownership, the, that ownership did change. They have changed. So I will give them all the credit for that. But at the beginning of his tenure, there are a lot of things they weren't going to budge on. Um, and sometimes I wonder how he would have coached elsewhere or if he had not had those restrictions, but, um, just digressing. Cause I'm just trying to provide out examples since, you know, everyone, spent most of their lives just watching this team. So they don't really think right. all the time about how other teams operate. Um, yeah. But you know, that, that ownership group changed. Um, I don't think that this one in this front office is resistant to change, but I do think that there are mistakes that they have made and now it's kind of, it's catching up to them. Um, and I think like this, I said, some of those draft picks, those are mistakes that they made and they have to figure out what they're going to do about that. when next year you know same old story they're they're going to be over the cap um and yeah they'll get under the cap but i mean it's just it's there's it's gonna be tricky i think there's gonna be i'm glad you said the thing about the the Bengals fans being like not okay with the status quo because for me as a fan when DA in the presser right after the lions game kind of came out and kind of said like oh like well we 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 got we got close like we they showed a lot of fight yeah. like to me that's like to me that's almost like a direct quote saying like like that's the, like we were close like and it, it that's what it felt like as a fan and I don't yeah. know maybe if if that in week thirteen you know what I'm saying like week, <laughs> yeah. week three and week three is like okay yeah. we're building towards something but in week thirteen it's like no close is not not where you should you coming off two losses going yeah. into your third loss going into your third loss. You had a bye week in between. It's like close is not the standard. I, I don't I don't get it. It it just it blows well, me away. I that that didn't I mean 
there was parts of that press conference that I know people were just like, is this actually being said? That did the they didn't, you know, roll over. That didn't bother me that much because right. the way that game was going, that oh. could have that, yeah, that could have been oh, one yeah. of the most embarrassing losses this franchise oh, has ever man. seen. Yes, um, ever seen. Yeah, it was looking yeah. bad. Yeah, what? I mean I'm I want this. I uh, just said I'm just saying it's it's a testament to the players that um, oh, no question absolutely no question absolutely that in that they haven't given up and so you know in coaching is it's part of that um, I think to some degree but <laughs> I, I know I know oh, wow. I don't know. Okay. there's I want to ask you both coaches what? on this team as, as well remember that okay it's, it's not just one coach there is what a was lot of DA getting uh, uh, yeah, okay God, I'll, I'll give you that it's not just one coach yeah. on the team you're right <laughs> what was DA getting a little terse with you. The other day, for when he was like, he apologized Which, to his credit. He apologized afterwards. Oh, yeah. He was like, "It's like there's no you can't compare. You can't compare the two. Like, oh, it was the injury. It was it was he had asked no, about like it was the yeah. James. It was the James part. Okay, so that's very funny because people like people are like, oh, he's you know being rude. I'm like, okay, I've covered Sean Payton for a long time. I'm like, yeah. that was like a two out of ten. Like that was nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't, I mean, and also, like, you got to understand, for as upset as everyone is, he is a human, and the things are not going well, and that team just beat them. So, yeah, I don't really, most of, I don't take that personally. Like, yeah, people aren't going to be in the best moods after they lose, but then I'll take yeah. like it too. Um, I think that he immediately, so I, I, I asked him, if they're planning to sit Derek Carr because Carr has left three games with injuries, as everyone knows, then concussion protocol twice, two concussions in three weeks, throwing shoulder injury, that's clearly been a problem since week three. So I said, is he planning to rest Carr? Because that was the reason they gave for resting Jameis um, in week four of last year. And he said it was a different situation. And so I said, well, why is it a different situation? He just says the different situation. So he didn't give a reason. And the reasoning is that he clear he he wants, I mean, I'm speaking for him, but I, I've been around long enough to know why coaches do what they do. He wants to end any Jameis versus Derek speculation comparison immediately. That's why I jumped on that. Um, but that's not going to – I mean, that's not – yeah, it, it's it, a runaway train at this point. You know what I mean. And the crazy, and the crazy thing is, like, I probably was like one of the first people to know that Jameis was playing with a broken back before, like most. And it's like if he was putting Jameis out there with a broken back, like, which is, and I'm not saying that uh, concussions, like, but like if that happened for two weeks, because that was what the Panthers game and then the Bucks game, if memory serves correctly, last season. Um, it just like it's. It's, it's it's comparing apples to apples. It's not like it's comparing apples to oranges. It's a very similar type of situation. So mm-hmm. the the question was great. The follow up was great, and understandably, I understand what what Da as the head coach was doing. But also, I kind of took it as if Jameis gets a game, right? If he gets a game and he plays moderately well, I'm not even saying like great, but if he mm-hmm. plays well, the offense looks somewhat in rhythm, and the Saints win. And then I, I I wonder, and again, this is just speculating. I wonder if Da wants to not have the like the tomato in his face of like he picked Derek Carr and Derek Carr has not looked great and he hasn't looked good, and so therefore, if Jameis plays decent or plays good, then it looks like it's even more on him for picking Garrett, Derek Carr and sticking with Derek Carr. So I I don't know, but that's probably, probably who, part of it. Do you think this organization has? has never wanted Jameis to be the starting quarterback. Well, I won't say mm-hmm. never, but they try they tried to go sign Deshaun or get Deshaun trade for Deshaun Watson um when Jameis was still out there. They chose to play Andy Dalton over him for the remainder of the season. Um and they signed Derek Carr over him. So I mean they I feel like they've they've made it clear that they don't feel like right. um he's their guy. Um, so yeah, it's not surprising that when they pay all this money to Derek Carr and they've clearly already chosen, um, another player of James more than once that they want that speculation to end, but that is not how that works. Uh, and so you're right. If James goes out there, if he plays this week and he looks good and they, 
you know, he's already said Derek Carr is our starting quarterback. Um, so it seems like that's rather going no matter what. But if Jameis goes out there and he looks good, then shouldn't they be playing whatever quarterback gives Ooh. them the best chance Uh-oh. to win since they're still in the playoff run? Uh-oh. I mean, especially <laughs> if your quarterback's injured. I mean, I, I just, right, yeah. Right, it, right, right. I mean, it's, but I, I settled it. I was saying the earlier stuff because that's that's probably not how it'll play out. Um, I mean, it just probably won't. So I'm very interested to see one if Jameis plays this week, and two, like how he'll play, actually starting a whole game. Um, right. The the worst know, thing that can happen for Da and Derek Carr in these next two weeks is if Jameis plays against the Panthers and looks decent or good and wins, and then Derek Carr comes back against the Giants and looks awful and the Saints lose, like, that would just put the whole entire team. That would be very big. Like, everything becomes, like, a huge tizzy. Like, a huge tizzy if if that were to happen. Not saying it's going to, but... No, most likely what would happen is both would look bad. (laughs) Like, Jameis would have, like, a... Jameis will have his typical Jameis game, you know what I'm saying, where some things look good, some things. And then, you know, Derek Carr comes back and he will have a Derek Carr type game, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all bad, you know. It's 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 The whole team has been inconsistent. Uh, the defense is probably the, you know, the most underrated story of the season because it's like, if anything, you were – everybody could agree on going into the season. Like, well, the defense is going to be fine. Like, the defense is going to be fine. Yeah, the pass rush is not there and all that, but the defense at least is going to be solid. For them to just fall off how they have, the run the run defense, you know, the constant, you know, uh, issue with, you know, mobile quarterbacks or qu- quarterbacks that not e- aren't even that mobile. Um, they are starting to just get banged up with more mobile. injuries. Yeah, it's like not even more like, oh, come on. Now. Trevor but, Lawrence had like like a knee injury and was out there looking like warm. <laughs> Boom, that bitch. We're just scrambling what, all over what, the place. what is going on? With, I want to like ask you, though. Leg. Yeah. But I want to ask you, like, you guys go into practice. You live like, what, 20, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. Uh, what does it look like at practice? Like, is it intense? Is it, you know, a guy? Like, does it look like a team that's like, you're right in the playoff hunt and you're fighting, you know, scratching, clawing, trying to be back in the game. Does it look like that to you? Or, uh, I, think I don't it know. It would be too it? hard to say because, like, we don't get to see much practice in the season. Um, so mostly we go in there. Uh, so we don't get to see their walkthrough. But um, we walk in there and they're usually doing their stretch. Then they'll do individual drills. They'll have the quarterbacks um, throw to receivers. Um like usually I'm watching the offense. Um, we don't get to see 11 on 11. Um, that would be great if we did. Uh, the most interesting thing on Fridays is we get to see the red zone work and that'll usually give you some sort of sense of who is going to be participating in offense or on offense in the upcoming game. Um, there are times I've been wrong before. Like sometimes I'll have a practice squad guy participating that I think will be called up and doesn't get called up. Uh, but usually it'll give you a pretty good sense, even though you only get to see a little bit. Um, so no, like you don't, I mean, there's, there's some days, I guess you can see more energy than others, but usually those are Fridays because I think everyone's just always like in a really good mood on Friday. Uh, they put Mm. the game plan to bed, but, um, you know, it's just not enough of practice to, to really give you like any sense of if they're going to win or not. We used to kind of be able to tell if, Peyton thought they were going to win or not because you yeah. can sometimes tell by his mood if he really thought that week that team was going to do good. There's some day, some weeks you're like, okay, yeah, must, must Peyton, be Peyton, must be not, must be nice yeah. to have that feeling. <laughs> what does that even feel like? I don't even know. Oh, I don't even know, bro. <laughs> um, well, the Panthers you, you, have only one one game, so that makes you. So I want I want to ask you, do you, I, I want to get your prediction? Do the Saints? Do the Saints win at home against against Carolina on Sunday? Um, I mean, Carolina just got eliminated from the playoffs, so I do think that the Saints will win, but I think it'll be close enough to really annoy everyone. I think like um, it'll, it'll be close <laughs> enough. To, it, I don't. I, I think they'll win, but I don't think the fans are going to come away from it happy. I feel like that's been most of the wins this season, except for yeah. the Patriots win. Yeah, um, it's, which was, it's a weird game. If they yeah. if they lose to the Panthers, who only have one one this season, would that potentially enough be enough to get Dennis Allen fired? 
Well, if they lose to the Panthers, then that probably means they're out of the NFC South. Well, it depends. So the the Falcons have a decently easy schedule, but they do play the Bucs this week. So they could lose to the Panthers, but the Falcons could lose to the Bucs, and then you're yeah. right back in the same position that you were in. I think mentally um, that wouldn't be great for them. But like I hate, I just hate but, the whole like like. Well, we're still like, <laughs> like if you as I mean, a but it's team, reality. but it's just it's just that that's the exhausting part. What I think what I was referring to, like the yeah. little circle of like why why are we using like us being in the hunt in a very bad division to assess the football team in terms of how good they are? Like that, like if you lose to a team that does only has one win this season. That is a that should be part of the equation, regardless of what the outcome is or where the Saints end. And I know, just because I know how the team operates, and we we all do, right? Like I, we know mm-hmm. it's not just seen like that. It's seen very much of the division and are they in the hunt, rather than like just honestly giving the team an honest observation of are they well coached, or is this something that's sustainable? And it's just not how they operate for whatever reason, right? I mean, I think at minimum, at minimum, they're they're going to have to make staffing changes in the off season in some capacity to give the fan base any hope. And I mean, the people are going to get there become scapegoats. Um, I think Pete Carmichael, I mean, very well could <laughs> be one of them. Poor, poor um, Pete. What? Which is poor crazy because Pete, 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 like, I don't want to be here anyway. He's like, thank you, please, please, let me just go go chill at home. Please, but you know how, really you, you know how this goes. You know how this goes when teams when teams don't win. Um, this episode of the Saints Block Party podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Woof! The holiday seasons are approaching, and gift giving season is right on the horizon. What do you do? To give gifts. Well, me and my family, we have a website that we go to and we kind of just put what we want, make our little gifts, gift lists. And then we kind of just go through the list and try to buy everybody the things that they want. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Well, whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. Best way to start is indulging in self care. No better place to start than better help. With better help, you can give to yourself starting therapy, giving yourself self care, and learn positive coping skills. It's simple, it's convenient. You get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with better help. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Hudat today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Hudat. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Yeah, I'm like, I'm trailing off, but uh, I mean, it's, you know, that's just, that's what happens in the NFL cycle. There's always a scapegoat. Um, and so at minimum, they're going to have to make some staffing changes um, and then address a lot of the issues uh, with the personnel. I mean, you talk about mobile quarterbacks and they, they can't match up well. Like, what if they just don't have the athletes to do that? I mean, that's a we- whole... Ryan's been, problem. Bu- with, been like, has been like hammering that, that table for years. 
like literally yeah. years in terms of like their draft profile just is not conducive to or at least for no, defensive ends no. not conducive it, to it built them to play tom brady you know it's like didn't you call them fat, it, like fat defensive tackles? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that was someone else on Twitter the just other day. Just whoever a whole bunch of Derek, a whole bunch of Derek Barnett's out there. Just <laughs> whoever said it made me laugh. No, I saw that. I saw that tweet. Yeah, but uh, yeah, da da just needs to learn to tell you next question. Yeah, that works. <laughs> next question. Oh man, I haven't got next question in a long time. I actually next I actually question. Then look someone. away. Yeah. I told someone the other day, I was like, I haven't pissed someone off in a long time. This is, uh, just, just back to my roots. It's been a just, long time. Right, just give it time. Just give it time. Yeah. I uh, was called hard headed as a kid. That shouldn't surprise you. So, no. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I, I was too. I, I still get called hard headed. Um, the last one Seven. I have for you, because cause I see that LSU helmet in the back is. <laughs> it's very old. I, I, I just have to ask it, and this is, uh, you know, we have a lot of LSU fans that listen. If the Saints continue to lose and potentially may pick top 10 in the draft, if Derek Carr's play continues to be, I'll be nice and say bottom five quarterback-ish this season, is there a reality or a world, potentially, where the Saints would potentially consider drafting Jaden Daniels in the first round? Um, that's a really good question. I don't think that's an easy question to answer because I'm trying to think through all the scenarios of like, who would they be needing to draft at that point? Like who's not going to be on this team anymore, which sounds silly, but I mean, I think that if he, if he's there, they consider him the best player available that, yeah, if they, they should do it because this is probably a scenario where Jameis would not be on the team anymore because he'll be a free agent in the off season. And I just can't see Jameis wanting to come back as a backup again. Um, I mean, maybe, but so, I mean, they do have Hayner though. It, it depends on, I mean, I was actually not factoring Hayner into the equation, not, not against him. I just didn't think about I it. I don't think they are either. <laughs> um, Truly. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have to. I'd really have to think about this question, and I love questions like this because it actually makes me think about the team's philosophy and and what they would do. But I think that this team, for so long, did not properly address the backup quarterback situation because Drew was just always going to be there until you know his body literally breaking down on the field, and it probably should have been addressed long before it was I mean we all know that Peyton talked about Mahomes and and all of that but um, if they've learned their lesson they will make sure that they have a proper backup plan but I don't know that this is a year where they could just say hey this is our year to draft the quarterback because you know first of all there's a cap situation when you look at Carr's contract it was pretty much an out in year three but they're gonna have to restructure it because they're going to have to figure out how to get under the cap. So then that would push the out back a year. So then are you going to draft a quarterback when you're still having this highly paid quarterback on your roster? They would have have to have completely given up on Carr. Um, and then that's another hole that you're not filling. So it's not always so simple as like, hey, Jane Davis is there. Let's go get him. Um, I guess but, the flip side to that is. So they looked at LSU, they do, I'm like, that would be interesting. Yeah. Well, I think the flip side of that is if they do draft Jaden Daniels and he's like hashtag good, uh, w- whatever that is in the NFL, like that in itself answers and like completes so many like checks off so many other boxes and like team wise. And I'm, I'm not I'm using Jaden Daniels as an example yeah. because of the helmet. No, it, it I know. I mean Drake May. And it's it be, a philosophy like, who, of the question. Yeah, that's that's why it's right. such an interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. question. Yeah. I'm not ready for draft I, season yet, but I guess we're oh, going to be talking about oh, it uh, sooner, sooner, me, sooner I, than we think. I, I check Tankathon every time they lose. <laughs> every time. Ninth right now, Kat. Don't worry. I got you covered. Um, yeah, picking ninth oh, overall man. in the draft. I'm, I'm calculating what teams need quarterbacks. Just because this would be such a weird year where the Saints would be, like, bad and potentially have a high first round draft pick. And this draft class is viewed as a very good, like a very great to good to great quarterback draft class. Like this, if they, if this is the year to draft 
have a draft pick and need a quarterback, like this is kind of the year to do it. So it's it's a fascinating philosophy just in, in general. Well, I'll say this. If we talked about earlier, how can they give this fan base hope? There it that is. That would be one way. If you there it is. go get a Daniels or, you know, maybe one of the other highly rated quarterbacks, but especially uh, Daniels. Ooh. Man, like – I, that will absolve them of all of the negativity, at least for it, a short period of time. It, it could probably <laughs> no, buy yeah. DA another. It could buy DA another another year, maybe another uh, year yeah. and a half, bro. Like it's, it's know. <laughs> seriously, seriously. Don't you let him be good too. Man that's going to get injured. Say what? You don't want a defensive end that's going to get injured. No, oh, please, I, I, please. <laughs> I say, I, I mean, <laughs> Marcus Davenport, Peyton Turner, Isaiah mm-hmm. Foskey. Enough, cat. Enough. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bring no, it just up. I'm just, star- I'm I'm just scaring the cat. It, it really doesn't bother. Me. It, it doesn't bother me. It just it makes me laugh. It doesn't point. bother you. <laughs> no, just, like I, I don't. You should see my. You should have seen my reaction to when the car interception happened against the Lions because it, it's funny and I need to cut it up because one of our guys in our live stream literally called it before it happened he was like what if like Derek Carr on the first like pass just like intercepts and 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 literally like maybe five seconds later that's exactly what happened so oh man I, I laugh at this point like, it's it's it's, it's funny. All funny it is funny you know I appreciate that because as I I tell everyone in regards I told everyone in regards to LSU all year I'm like if you just move to the acceptance phase as quickly as possible your team can't hurt you Oh, you no, have no. to. You have to just move to the acceptance phase. So people were complaining about LSU defense in November, and I'm like, no, no, I just I accepted a long time ago. They were, they were not gonna be good on and defense, I, and I I'm okay with it. I think but the I'm thing not, that still that annoys Ryan and I it isn't like it isn't so much like the outcome. It's it's how like it's the decision making. It's the ineptitude. Yes, that we kind of like see and and like. I, I think I, I can I can say this is like the Saints fan base is incredibly intelligent. And we said this on the recap pod. Yeah. And I like agree. when when we know we're being like shoveled bullshit, like like we're just like like we're 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 not buying it. Like we're just not gonna buy it. Whatever you are trying to sell, it's not and that's I think for us we're that's where a lot of the fed upness comes up with is just like this is this is what it is. Like, you can't try to like give us different color glasses and tell us it's something else when we see kind of what it is. Um, and I get it as a, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> like, like it, we just have to go with it until, until something happens. If something happens, but yeah. The interesting thing is going to be, it's like when the story of the season, it's all said and done, however it ends, if it ends in the playoffs, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, what did what is the team going to go back and point as the problem? Like you know, every year they'll say, "Well, this happened and this happened." Like you say, like I'm going to make excuses all the way to the off season, and then the team will finally every, say, "Well, these are the problems." Just, so just, what? Just, yeah. What did the? Yeah, what is the team? What do they say about this team? Like, and I, I'll be interested to know slash ask um, how they felt, what they felt was the overarching uh, problem for this I'm team. Go, um, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what the problem is right now. Cool. It was Derek Carr getting injured versus Green Bay, which nagged him all season. It was Pete Carmichael, um, and it was injuries at defensive line or whatever you say, Peyton Turner maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and, the off- and the offensive line. That's going to be their reasoning, and they're going to punch it again and say, let's go for one more year. Let's fix it this year. We're going to. But then my it. then my counterpoint would be: Well, how can how did a player like Alante Taylor regress? How did a player like Pete Warner regress? And these are all defensive play. Like anyway, we, yeah. But one one last thing I wanted to ask you before it slips my mind. It's slipping. Hold on. Well, let me see if I can grab it. Um, I'm going to ask you this question because I've asked Ryan this question twice throughout this season, especially because you are in the trenches covering the team. Can you tell me? What does this season Saints team does better than last season Saints team? Oh, that's a good question. Um, they they force turnovers better. I think besides, the second uh, yep, they force not, turnovers not, better. Yep, that I besides that, because that's I, I excluded that when I asked Ryan. Besides <laughs> I mean, the turnover. You didn't give team. me an exclusion. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I mean, I would say overall, like, I mean, I know you mentioned Taylor regressing, but I think overall the secondary is better. Um, 
part maybe part of that was Lattimore playing. Um and maybe not having uh, as wild a swings as he's had before. Because you all you all know when Lattimore's on, he is on. Um yeah, but I right. would say probably the, the secondary has has been better. Um but yeah, like I had to I mean, I had to think about it because I would, I could, I mean, you know how I am. I could sit there and be like, well, this player is better and this player is better. Mm-hmm. But um, overall, it, it, I just remember sitting in London and the day they lost that game. And oh, I, I was think, there. Vikings game. Yeah, I think DA, I think it was London. I'm pretty sure. Um, and DA said something like, well, we're going to fix it. And I said, well, you know, what is, what is the plan to fix it? And I just, it, it feels, this team feels so just kind of like stuck where they were last year I when I wrote that thing last December I had this like blurb about um what the team's problems were or something um I tweeted it the other day because we were doing a similar thing this year and I went back to see what I wrote last year and it was the same thing I was like I could have written that lot this year what's Um, the definition of insanity okay sorry let me me stop I'd have to go (laughs) on my Twitter and see what I said but um you would you would just like you would laugh. I mean, it is the same thing as what is happening with this team now, and so that that just tells you like they're just kind of they're just kind of stuck. Um, and they shouldn't be stuck. You know, they spent all this money to go get their quarterback, and it, it just feels like, other than a couple of players like Shahid, I think Shahid has been you know um, awesome, awesome. I think, Re- yeah, he's been revelation. I don't even want to say pleasant surprise, like an ascending player. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we got asked what what player was a pleasant surprise, and I didn't. I put Granderson, and but I, but I was like, well, maybe Shahid, but he's. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if you can call him a surprise or not. Maybe a surprise as to, you know, how he's turned into an overall like a more well rounded right. receiver, but still like. I mean, and you say Saints fans are smart. Like, y'all are all over that from, like, day one when he got signed to the team. He wasn't even playing. And, ever, and Saints fans were like, oh, yeah, no, this guy. He's got he's to play. This is the guy. Um, and he was immediately. But, yeah. I promise this is it. Because we told you, like, 25 <laughs> minutes and it's almost, no, yeah, almost an hour. No, it's a good conversation. Right. This, is, this is it. Is th- is this it for Michael Thomas with the Saints after the whole well, tweet thing? One. That is a good one. That's that's something that we've talked about um, this year, uh, this year, this week. Oh my gosh, yeah. this is what this season has done to me. <laughs> yeah, us too, cat. Us yeah. too. Well, we had talked about it this year, obviously, starting last January, but um, this week. Um, well, so that I hate to give another long answer. I feel like what happened this week will probably pass. Um. But, you know, if there's a fundamental problem between one of your star wide receivers and your quarterback, that is a big issue. Um, and, yeah, I don't think there's any way around that. I don't know that that would be a big enough issue that come March, February, when all this stuff has been put to bed, that they would say, well, that's the reason Michael Thomas is not coming back. I think it's going to come down to, like, one, does he want to be here? And, two, what kind of leverage does he have? So they have to redo his contract because of all the right. poison pills built in from last year. Did he play enough for another team to want to come pay him as much as the Saints would probably pay him because they know him? Um, I think that all depends on – I mean, I'm saying this as if he's coming back. I mean, I guess we'll find out in a few weeks. Um, if he does come the- back and play, then maybe it's all smoothed over. Um I- the thing that's interesting to me and is that if you're a wide receiver and you feel like, especially like he's, he, he's quite a probably towards the more of end of his career. If you feel like your playing and your effort is potentially being wasted on a quarterback, that's not very good at that point. You're in to his head. I'm like, why, why would I go back to a team that has a quarterback of that? caliber or I could go potentially to another team that has an upgrade at quarterback and the last point I think I'd say regarding the whole Michael Thomas thing with with Derek Carr is that a lot of the gripes that Michael or issues that Michael Thomas has to Derek Carr are are, are almost identical to the gripes that like Devontae Adams had with Derek Carr after only playing with him for like one season last year with the Raiders and so like I just look at it as like a common denominator thing like but Adams and Carr seem to have a good relationship right on 
hashtag on paper. <laughs> Funny, like recently was like talking about how um, he came there to play with Derek Carr. I mean, he, I well, like, he he said like, yeah. he said that like initially, but I'm, I'm saying like towards the end, like he couldn't. It stand. didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. I will say Carr speaks glowingly of him, so I don't know. I yeah. can't speak oh. to that relationship. Um, hey. but, I would hope so. Um, he got him paid again. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. As, as far as Thomas goes, and just talking about this season, because I feel like I actually didn't answer the question because um, I'm not ready to write them all. I think that's hard to say. As far as this season goes, if they can iron that out, I I don't see him just not playing. Like I think Thomas wants to play, He's but I also said, yeah, I also said at the beginning of the season, I said they're gonna get him hurt. He was taking every hit. Like every head. I was like, this is a matter of time before they're they're gonna get him hurt. And I mean, that's ultimately what happened. And like, no, he didn't get hurt on that specific play because of the pass, but um for the play right before, you know, he took a really hard hit. Um and hard I don't hit. know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible the injury occurred on the play before and didn't know it till the next play, because he stayed in. Um but he also did say, like, you know, I told Derek I want all those um, tough passes, like the tough hits over the middle, because I think Thomas felt like he had something to prove. I think mm-hmm. he felt like he needed to show people, hey, like, I've still got it. Got I it. am tough. Like, no matter what y'all say, like. Um, Michael, Michael like, I said that. I said that, but damn, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Should, me. should the Saints just move Derek Carr to safety? <laughs> like, he just loves getting <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> just entries. <laughs> We're just moving to safety, man. Just oh god, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, um, um, so that that rant, rant week will be interesting if Lattimore and Carr come back. That would be a tricky week. That'd be a hard week to do that though with Thursday yeah. game. But um, oh, is that the is they? Oh, it's the rant. Oh man, I'm at that yeah. Game. See how it goes. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm not excited about the game. I'm excited that we're gonna have like 35 people all together. You know, yeah, from be awesome. people support. Yeah, so like I'm excited about the community. I'm excited about the like the people I'll be around. The game itself, I don't whatever. Are we gonna buy like a huge hashtag fired in the town and banner and be right behind like the team section? Maybe I don't know, Cat. I don't know. It's just things that we're just still you know thinking about. But the experience will be fun, and SoFi is a beautiful, beautiful stadium. So yeah, we'll I'm have excited. Fun I'm excited. Oh, you um, have you have you never been? You haven't no, been I wasn't at the um, crazy earthquake, hurricane, oh, yeah. whatever was going on <laughs> this summer. It's always something, as you all y'all always say. Like always, t- t- always, t- always, always, t- always, t- 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 always some shit. Normal, you just can't always be some shit. Um, but That's I also always say team, you can be That's bad. My team. You can be bad, <laughs> but you can't be bad and boring. Um, there you go. Thank you. That's what yes. Brian and I harp on. Oh, yes. You can't harp. be bad and you can't. boring. You can't. Right. And I feel like this has oftentimes been what, like, the Saints have been during the season. Like, they, they start off super, super slow. Then there's, like, that fake little hope comeback against, like, the Jags. And they had one against the – they just had one against the Lions and the yeah. Texans kind of sort of too, but like watching sort of those like a ga- second I, against the Vikings. Right. Oh yeah. I completely forgot about that. But like, I, I was at the Texans game. We like, there's just been, it feels like it's just the same script over and over and over again. And they are like hard games to actually like watch too, especially offensively. And that doesn't make, and that's the big thing that just doesn't make any sense, but. We're not going to dive into Also, that. you're, but, I mean, yes, I, I don't want to like story on a rant. I just, I think it's a big difference when um, you're a fan and you're watching those games and they're at the goal line and you don't have hope, like, you don't feel confident they're going to score. No, that is, um, and that's an not awful feeling to feel like yeah, a fan. As, as a fan, like, that's not fun. You know, I don't really think being a fan is fun in general. Like, we always joke. Oh, it's, it's awful. My friends, it's, we're it's, like, no. no one likes awful. their team. No one likes their I'm team. So, gonna, I'm <laughs> so. I'm so glad, like, I stopped very early trying to get my daughter to be, like, a fan of football. Like, she doesn't like any sports. I wish I, I wish I was like that. Like, she has it figured out. Just one quick, 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 quick thing. What, what can, do you have any insight on the Jimmy Graham situation of why, like, they were struggling in the red zone and then he was inactive for, like, six weeks? Like, any at all? Or I, 
I mean, I just don't think they, I don't think that they believe that he's, he's the player that he was. And obviously, I mean, he's 37 um, and he's behind the other tight ends. Yeah. But I, I just keep harping on, I just keep harping on like, don't say you have a vision when you sign him. If you don't have a vision, just say, Hey, you know what? He is going to compete for a job. Um, you know, actually, you just you leave it at that. He's going to compete for a job like everyone else. So when you say you have a vision for him, then it gets people excited. I mean, I understand, like, depth chart-wise, the other three tight ends are going to play ahead of them. So they're probably thinking, well, we don't really have a spot for them, him. But when you're that bad in the red zone, I mean, you, you've got to be creative. And the, they just well, don't have offensive creativity right now. Well, what annoys I mean, so, me is uh, yeah, what annoys my, me is the vision was the my, what annoys me is the vision was for him to be a weapon in the red zone. He has two catches for two touchdowns in the red Both zone. In the red zone. So so he's like he's doing his job. He's doing what was yeah. advertised. But you don't play him. I, it's yeah. like it's not even a thing where I just want to see Jimmy Graham. It's like for out of football yeah, like, sense, it makes sense for him to, and he gets like one snap in the last game. Like, like, he got the touchdown and that was it. Like, we'll see you. Have a nice day. I think, like, I think you DA, like, so, talking about stirring the pot, like, I, I think DA really doesn't like it when I ask, like, specifically, like, why didn't this player get more snaps? Because I swear, I have asked that about Taysom, like, a million times. Not just this yeah. season, going back to the last season. I remember the Cleveland <laughs> game? I, I mean, it's oh, windy. Yeah, yeah. It's windy. Yes. It's rainy. They can't pass the ball. You have a guy that's really good at running the ball. They didn't play second half. And, minutes. Yeah, and then like minutes. second half, and then second half, yeah. he like goes crazy. Like, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> but I say that because he just gave me this like smile when I started bringing up Jimmy Graham on Monday, and I was like, well, clearly you already know where I'm going with this. Um, right. It's not going to change anything. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I people are about to go crazy that I'm about to say this, but I wouldn't be surprised next week he goes back to, to being inactive. They just oh, I mean, I wouldn't like, be surprised could you at imagine? All. Yes, I wouldn't yes, be surprised I can, at all. actually. Um, uh, I mean, I can. I can, especially if Shahid this... comes back. I think surely if you broke down the roster, there's probably like two or three people that are active on game day that you could swap out. Like, even if that's his only thing to do, it's you worth six points, Cat. It's yeah, worth six it's points. Boring. Like, do something. Like, if you're not scoring, do something. Like, I don't know. Send one of the Ugh. like. Sign one of the coaches as a player and send them out there. Like, do something. Like, something. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, it's interesting. And again, now, I don't want to go too long, but I do have one more thing. Now, Cat sounds like now. Now, Cat sounds like us. You know, I'm like, I just keep <laughs> rambling. So, um. The only other thing I want to add real quick. I just think that this, they – how all these – how the coaches and um, I guess Derek too, like, view the identity of this team is very interesting and kind of yeah. telling and intriguing. Because you, I believe, asked all of them after Apple Commander's comments, how do you see the identity of this team? And um, DA said it was an explosive offense. Um, Derek said it was an explosive offense. And then Pete said, you know um, – we're a play action. We do a play action. Um, What's getting cat? Yeah. I know that man did not. Well, he did. Audacity to say that yeah. this is a play action offense. Who are you yeah. lying to? Right now? No, it got brought up. It got someone. One reporter said, "Well, you're last in play action," uh, and he said, "Well, you've been running more of it." And I'm just like. <laughs> They just be talking, bro. They just be talking. They, they just um, be saying football football words and just hope hope they make sense, bro. <laughs> Play action motion, pre snap, like just, just just vernaculars just thrown out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> last in play action. Like I knew that they were last in play action because these these are like the little things that like our community talks about. Like I knew they were like we knew they were last in play action. Is Carmichael had the audacity to say that they're a play action outfits? What? What? Go back and listen to last doing, Friday's press conference. <laughs> I always sometimes when people talk, like I'm always aware of cameras being around and that I really try to really try to make sure my face is always neutral. 
Because I know you want to bust out laughing sometimes. I don't. I don't know if it. I mean, it was. Pro- I think he did a good job in that one. Well, I was waiting. I was waiting to say, well, how do I phrase this? Actually, your last didn't play action. So, um, but someone else said it. So and- I get. Oh. So then- so with with that, and uh, we're just going on a, on a tangent at this point. I oh, know it's my fault. No, you're fine. But like, you have your star running back, a captain of this team, someone who's been at the pinnacle of the center of the offense with Sean Payton for one, like for a couple of seasons, looked like one of the best entire players in the NFL, not just on the Saints, in the entire NFL. And he comes out a couple of weeks ago and says they don't have an identity. He's also said that they don't play matchup football anymore regarding to the offense in terms of taking advantage of matchups. Yeah, that was and interesting. He, he said that on record to the media. And then you have the quarterback, the head coach, and the offensive coordinator who doesn't want to be offensive coordinator, essentially saying that he's like, they're like contradicting what he says. So like, which one is it? Like which, which one Sean Payton said that, Alvin Kamara is one of the smartest football minds he's ever coached. It's like, I'm going to believe what 41 says over what most of anyone else says. He told Sean in that Falcons game, hey, run this play. I think we can, I think we can do something off of it. I saw something on the defense. I think he'll break open. Sean uh, puts the play in at halftime, runs it in the second half against that Falcons team, and it goes for a long game. This man is telling you what the offense is. And like everyone else is saying, oh, no, we're not that. We're like, what? So the, that's the stuff, like, that's the, like, the shoveling of bullshit. Like, as fans, I'm just like, are, are, y'all, are y'all watching the same football? Like, are you think we're dumb? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. It, that's the, fru- that's the stuff that for, like, us mm-hmm. as fans, Ryan, that's the frustrating part. Like, don't try to just shovel, shovel us bullshit when we know what's, what the reality of it is. And so does Alvin Kamara, apparently. But I, yeah, he didn't say anything. He, I don't even think he said anything that he didn't say anything that outlandish. I mean, he didn't. No. He, didn't. Yeah, he, he, I, I he didn't said what was, was obvious to everyone. Yeah, he said what was yeah. obvious to everyone yeah. that the team doesn't um, have an identity right now. It's like, yeah, I mean, like I've heard Drew Brees say that before. I, I, yeah, I mean, but I think um, so like the Jimmy Graham thing is kind of plays into that because like, no, does anyone think that if Jimmy Graham was active? every game that it, it would be some major difference. So I don't, I don't think that people think mm-hmm. that, but I think that people, you know, like, like we're talking about Saints fans are very smart and it doesn't, you know, you put two and two together. There are a lot, they can't, they're having trouble scoring until the Lions game. There's a guy that maybe if you just at least try it out and, you know, and maybe he'd play and it's not working, but how do you, how do you know that? You know exactly. I, mean, yeah, I guess it, it, I, yeah, I guess we're go, seeing some of the it's, practice, it's, but oh, then, goes, then goes back to Trevor Penny. Still... Just goes back to yeah. Trevor Penny. Like, 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 it's, I mean, it's similar Watson to actually tweeted at me and said like, why is he? Then why is he? Why they sign him if that's he's not going to play? And Ben Watson played with. Did he play with Jim? I think Ben Watson played. Well, even if he didn't play with Jimmy Graham, he knows while. him. Did he? I think right. he didn't know because I think Ben was here in fourteen, and so is Jimmy. I I can't remember, but it's the same thing with old. uh with Zach Bond. It's the same thing with Zach oh, Bond. Boy. It's like, it's like okay, maybe he would not be good as a pass rusher, maybe. But it's what he did in college, down, but... right? But it's yeah. what he did in college. Like at least try him there, and when they do, like you do see something, you know. You this, see man, something this man, this man beat the one of a premier right tackle for a sack on Sunday, and <laughs> we. It's just and it was a yeah, nice, like, it wasn't like a gimme sack. It was a nice, he had the dip rip move. I was like, that's pretty nice. It's just so many problems with this team. I just, I just scratched my head. It just, yeah. it drives me crazy. Yeah. We got to let you go, kid. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> right. Have a, have a, I was, have a, I was have just a... thinking about Zach Bob, and I was like, yeah, I mean, he, he, he showed you who he was in college. Um, he, like, I, going back to per- percentages, like, he rushed the pasture at Wisconsin. I want to say, like, 80 percent of the time <laughs> like, like I don't, I don't, and he yeah, gets drafted and they're like we're gonna move him to michael linebackers like what 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 okay anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> you're like anyway i could talk about this all night i could i could Catherine terrell the professional instigator hopefully hopefully when you're in los angeles we can actually break bread for like the first time we've been 
trying to do it for I don't know what ten plus years. And, it feels and me like. like not flake out this time. Big big flake. I didn't big mean flake. to. Big Dendra I, I over there. I didn't mean to, but I did. I, I admitted that. I admit that I was <laughs> like, I can admit, I can admit my flaws. It's okay. It's okay. I, I'm if, just if saying, it doesn't happen, bad. I'm... If it doesn't happen, I know why, Kat. It's all right. But thank you for for coming on. I'm sure if you're listening to this or watching this, um, you're already following following Catherine on Twitter. Um, but if not, follow her on Twitter at Cat underscore Terrell T E R R E L L. Um, Two L's. I know. I hold up four. <laughs> but, I'm a journalist, um, not a mathematician. Know me. Um, but I'm not a journalist because people ask me for my sources all the time, even though they don't understand how journalism works. Um, <laughs> but I love it people outside. It's my favorite question. Thank you for thank you for coming on. We have to get you on here more regularly. Obviously, I know you have to go through your channels, but ESPN's own has been covering the Saints. Um, how many years now in totality? Not like the break. Like um, eight? Well, I don't know if 2012 counts. That was my first year, but I was like the backup. Um, I mean, it, it, were, were you like at practice? If it, you were at practices, it counts to me. Um, was that practice? Was it? So Larry was like doing Bounty Gate stuff back then. So like whenever he wasn't there, I was there. So I was at all the games. It anyway, let's just count it. We'll count it. It counts. So 12, it 13, 14, 15, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. Oh, that's nine years covering the same. Ooh. 12 years covering the NFL. Where did the time go? Flies by. Go. Go. It, it really does. The, the season always does. And I, I love it every year, no matter if it's if, if if they're bad and boring or just bad or if it's a good team, you know, it's always it's always fun and I always miss it whenever it's over. We we appreciate it more more than you know. This was a great, great, amazing episode. And even it didn't even feel like a podcast, it just felt like just three people just bullshitting and talking about the Saints, which is what we try to do. So thank you so much. We will hopefully touch base in los angeles when you're here um but give her a follow and thank everyone for listening uh like and subscribe on youtube with that we're out peace When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.